Okay, last time we had dealt with waveguides and cavity resonators with perfect electric, perfect, perfectly conducting boundaries. Today they are called perfect electric conductors or PEC boundaries. The characteristic feature of such PEC boundaries is that the tangential component of the electric field vanishes on the boundary and the normal component of the magnetic field also vanishes on the boundary. So they satisfy the condition that E tan equal to 0 on the boundary and H nor equal to 0. There is another type of, uh, of conducting surface which is called a perfectly PMC, perfect magnetic conductors. It is just the opposite of a perfectly electric, a perfect electric conductor in which we used by the duality relation, uh, the, by the duality property of Maxwell's equations which say that the Maxwell equations remain invariant under the transformation E goes to H and H goes to minus E with epsilon and mu interchanged. Here they satisfy, if you apply the duality to this, you will get a duality relation to this, you will get the boundary conditions for a perfectly magnetic, perfect magnetic conductor, namely H tan will be 0 here and E nor will also be 0 on this surface. Such surfaces do, such bound, such uh, materials do exist in principle and what happens is that if you write down the Maxwell's equations del dot E equal to rho by epsilon naught and you put del dot B equal to 0, instead of putting del dot B equal to 0, you assume there are magnetic monopoles with charge, with magnetic charge density rho m and you write this equation. So in the absence of Suppose there, are, there do exist magnetic monopoles in nature, which means that divergence of B does not vanish, vanish or equivalently there need not be, the magnetic field lines need not be closed loops. They can go out from a magnetic monopole, they can emanate away from a magnetic monopole. So you get this equation. Likewise you have Faraday's law of induction del, of uh, uh, Ampere's law, which says that del cross H is equal to mu naught J plus mu naught epsilon naught dou E by dou T, where J is the electric. Uh, current density, electric current density and you write Faraday's law as del cross E is equal to minus dou B by dou T or minus mu naught dou H by dou T. Then in this is, th this is in the absence of any magnetic, uh, that is magnetic, this is, there is a rho m tells you the density of magnetic charges. You can also have a density of magnetic current and uh, analogous to the analogous to this equation, analogous to the Ampere's law, you will have an, uh, another term. If you change E to H, then you will get del cross H, H to minus C, you will get do, mu naught dou E by dou T. So you will get this equation, sorry this should have been del cross H is equal to, there will not be a J here, there will not be a mu naught here. So if you interchange epsilon and mu naught in this and change E to H, you will get plus mu naught dou H by dou T, mu, mu naught, uh, sorry, how do I erase this just once. Huh mu naught dou h by dou t plus j m. That is if you have, if you have a magnetic current density of j m, then you and you change h to e, h to minus e, you will get del cross minus e and if you change, if you change j to j m and e to h, you will get this, which can also be written as del cross e is minus mu naught j, mu naught h by dou h by dou t minus j m. In other words, you have complete duality in the Maxwell's equations under interchange of fields and sources. So the complete duality will be manifest when we add in addition to the, magnet, uh, to the electric charge density and the electric current density, a magnetic charge density and a magnetic current density into Maxwell's equations. So you get duality under the relation E goes to, under the interchange E goes to H, H goes to minus E, J goes to JM, J and JM get interchange rho and rho m get interchanged and epsilon naught and mu naught get interchanged. So you have a complete duality when you, uh, in the, this is, this, these max, these generalized Maxwell's equations are valid for both electric, perfectly electric, perfect electric conductors and perfect magnetic conducting boundaries. In the case of a P, PMC, so just as we derived the boundary, the boundary conditions for E and H. For, uh, uh, in the case of perfect electric conductors, we can derive the boundary conditions in the case of perfect magnetic conductors. The, uh, in the case of a PEC, what, what boundary condition does the tangential component of the magnetic field satisfy? It satisfies n cross H, namely H tan is equal to Js, where Js is the surface current density. In the case of uh, a perfect magnetic conductor, you will have n cross E is equal to minus Jm. 
minus JSM, where JSM is the surface magnetic current density. So, uh, you can derive these equations very easily. For example, if you take a perfect electric, condu electric conductor, this is a perfect electric conductor and here you apply the Maxwell's, uh, the Ampere's law with Maxwell's displacement correction term, you get n cross h tan is equal to Js, n cross h is equal to Js, you get this equation. If you take a perfect magnetic conductor here and then you apply the, the uh, equation, Faraday's law of induction taking into account magnetic currents you will get n cross h. Here there is a reversal in the sign you see del cross e is equal to minus j m. Here you have del cross h is equal to j. So, analogous to this if you apply Faraday's law of induction taking into account magnetic currents, then you will get the line integral of e around this loop is equal to the total current magnetic current flowing through this loop with a negative sign. So, this boundary condition n cross h is equal to j s will get replaced by n cross e is equal to minus j s m where JSM is the uh, surface magnetic current that is magnetic current per unit length of the perfect magnetic conductors. Now, we see one thing, suppose we take a perfect electric conductor and you have, uh, you have calculated the surface uh, current density on this surface by applying the relation n cross h is equal to Js. Then let us say this surface is given by an equation of the form R is equal to R of uv where u and v are two free parameters and you know the magnetic field everywhere on this surface. That means, you know h is a function of r at a given frequency and you can write this as h of r of u v. Then you can find out the, in principle you can find out the radiated fields and you can calculate the pointing vector, the radiation resistance and everything of this surface. So, that is what we do in the case of a waveguide or a cavity resonator. You take a cavity resonator, for example, a rectangular cavity resonator R d R a and you compute on any given surface j s as a function of let us say, let us say you compute on this surface, this is the x, x direction, this is the z direction. So, you compute j s as a function of x and z. Then what do you do? You take j s as a function of x and z, how do you compute it? You write it as n cross n is here y cap, right, y cap is the unit normal to this surface. So, this is y cap cross h and y, cro y cap cross h at uh, the point x z, x 0 z and uh, this will have two components, it will have an x component, it will have a z component. So, you can write j s x as a function of x and z is equal to, if you take y cross z you will get h x. So, this is equal to h x, uh, h x x 0 z into x cap and z and if you take the z component of this y cross z, y cap cross z cap is equal to x, y, cra y, cop, y cap cross z cap is equal to x cap. So, here you will have a z and y cap cross x cap is equal to minus z, minus, minus z cap. That is you have y cap cross x cap is equal to minus z cap and y cap cross z cap is equal to x cap. So, you will get two contributions, one from the z component and another from the x component of the magnetic field and y cross x is equal to minus z. So, minus h uh, minus h x of x 0 z times z cap, times z cap. So, we will have both the tangential components and if you want to find out the far field radiated pattern, simply use the retarded potential of the Green's functions of the Green function of the Maxwell's equations. If you look at the Maxwell's equation or for the that matter the wave equation, three dimensional wave equation and suppose you look at its Green function, Green's function. So, it will be given by g r r prime is equal to delta 3 r minus r prime. If you know the solution to this Green's function, for solution for this Green's function, for this Green's function of the uh, three dimensional Helmholtz equation or equivalently if you go to the time domain the three dimensional wave equation, then in with the given boundaries, boundary condition, then you can calculate the for, for example, the response, uh, you can calculate the radiated fields produced by any source. So, in particular, if you look at, if you look at the equation del square plus k square multiplied by the vector potential uh, acting on the vector potential a of r a at uh, a at r prime a at r is equal to uh, is equal to j of r minus mu naught j at r this is the equation satisfied by the vector potential this is the with a given boundary condition and this is the equation satisfied by green po greens function of the Helmholtz equation with the same boundary condition, say the Dirichlet boundary condition or the Neumann condition, then you can write the solution to this equation. 
which satisfies the given boundary condition as simply the Green's function G R R prime acting on J 0 minus mu 0 into J, Z, J of R prime, J of R prime. Let us say at that particular frequency D 3 R prime, and this will give you the radiated fields. From A, you can calculate the electric field using a very simple idea. You can use the fact that either you use the Lorentz gauge condition, which says that divergence of A is equal to minus j omega mu naught epsilon naught phi. You calculate phi from this and calculate the electric field as minus del phi minus j omega A at that frequency and take only the 1 by r term because that will correspond to the radiated pattern. You can take just the 1 by r term or else what you can do is you can use Maxwell's equation in the form del cross h is equal to outside uh, outside the region where there are any currents del cross h is j omega epsilon e and h is equal to b by mu which is equal to del cross a by mu. So, if you substitute this into this equation you get j omega epsilon e into mu is equal to del cross del cross a which is equal to del del dot a minus del square a, but a is satisfying Helmholtz equation outside the region of char outside the region where there are currents away from the region where there are currents. So, plus k square a. So, if you know a you can get e, uh, e using this idea very using this formula very easily it is the same as applying the Lorentz gauge condition. So, when you have when you want to solve for the radiated fields outside with a given boundary condition say you have a boundary here which is radiating here you have the within this boundary you have the let us say you have a current density j, j of r and you want to calculate the radiated fields. So, you have to calculate the solution to a r is equal to uh, minus mu naught j of r with the boundary condition that a that a the tangential component of the electric field on this surface will be something if it is a perfect electric conductor then it should be 0 on this surface if it is uh, tangential component of the electric field should be 0 on this surface, if it is a perfect magnetic conductor then the tangential component of the magnetic field should be 0 on this surface like that and you can get the solution to this equation by simply applying the Green's function G r r prime J r prime D 3 r prime minus mu naught over this body of current where this is over this body of current it will give you the right answer in free space when there are no boundaries of course, this is subject to the condition that there are some boundaries here where the you are constraining the Green's function to be 0. So, that the uh, solution for the electric vector potential will satisfy certain the appropriate boundary conditions, but in this case when the entire region is free space here you do not have any boundary then the solution to the Green's function is simply known to be given by the following formula you have the Green's function g r r prime is equal to delta 3 r minus r prime and g r r prime goes to 0 as r goes to infinity that is the boundary condition and for all r prime away from the away from the source and the solution to this is simply given by using Fourier transform it can be obtained as minus e power minus j k mod r minus r prime by 4 pi mod r minus r prime it is well known it is equivalent to the equivalent to using the retarded potential solution in the time domain. The retarded potential solution solves the Maxwell's equation uh, completely by uh, calculating the magnetic vector potential as well as the electric scalar potential in terms of the electric current density and the electric charge density. So, in free space what is the solution? The solution the radiated fields are simply given by at a given frequency r where omega is equal to k c mod k into c, c is equal to 1 by root epsilon epsilon not mu epsilon mu. So, this is given by applying the Green's function to the current density which will give you minus mu naught by 4 pi or mu naught by 4 pi integral e power minus j k mod r minus r prime by mod r minus r prime multiplied by j of omega r prime d 3 r prime in the this is in the case of radiation by a body, but we are interested in radiation coming from the surface of an antenna for example, surface of the uh, uh, 
uh, of a perfect electric conducting of a perfectly electric conducting surface. So, <laughs> we took the example of the exit surface, exit plane, exit surface of a rectangular dielectric resonator antenna RDRA, this exit surface where we had J s was a function of x 0 and z. In that case, you will replace this volume integral by a surface integral and the radiated fields will be given by a omega r in the far field. This will be given by mu naught by 4 pi integral j s over the surface. So, let me call that as r dash. R dash is the surface surface on which which take which are parameterized by x and z, or it may be any two dimensional surface parameterized by u and v, two parameter, two free parameters, real two real free parameters u and v as I mentioned just earlier. So it will be Js at R dash. What will it be? The radiated fields will be A of omega r equal to mu 0 by 4 pi integral j s at omega r prime e power minus j k mod r minus r prime by mod r minus r prime d s r prime, where the uh, it varies over the surface. d s is the surface element on the surface. In the case of the r d r a d s r prime is simply d x d z. Okay, this will be the uh, radiated uh, magnetic vector potential. In the far field zone, what happens is that r is much much larger than r dash, because r dash varies over the body of the uh, resonator over the surface of the resonator that is near the origin, whereas R is very far away from that. Here R prime varies over this. So if you look, if you apply the far field formula, what happens? R minus R prime can be written as R square plus R prime square minus two R dot R prime power minus half, and you can write this as R minus one into one plus R prime by R square minus 2 r dot r cap dot r prime to minus 2 r dot r dot cop r dot r cap dot r prime divided by r power minus half. And uh, you are assuming that r by r, r prime by r is very small that is the dimensions of the uh, the dimensions of the surface are very small compared to the distance of the point where you are calculating the field in the far field zone. So, you can make an approximation to r by r prime, but it turns out to be a to get a 1 by r approximation for the fields, it is enough if you replace 1 by mod r minus r prime by 1 by r mod r itself. But what but the phase phase changes rapidly, you cannot make such an approximation there. You cannot replace r minus r prime by simply mod r here because a small change in r prime will also pr will produce a very rapid change in the phase because k is a large k, k corresponds to a large frequency. So, in that case, we make the following approximation r minus r prime. Uh, is equal to r square minus 2 r dot r prime power half because you are neglecting r prime square by r square in comparison to r prime by r right so you will get this and this is approximately equal to using the binomial approximation this is r times 1 minus r cap dot r prime that's all 1 minus r cap dot r prime you pull an r outside and write this as 1 minus 2 r cap dot r prime, where r cap is a unit vector along the direction r, where you are measuring the field. Okay. Mod r I am denoting by simply an r without any subscript. So, uh, okay, you will divide by, you have to divide by r also in addition, because when you pull out an r square, you are going to divide by r square, one r by r will, uh, r by mod r will give an r cap, another one by mod r remains. So, it will be this r and this can be written as r minus r cap dot r prime. So, effectively what happens in the far field zone, far field zone radiation pattern, radiation pattern it will be a of r I am ignoring the subscript I am ignoring the say, uh, I am ignoring the argument omega for frequency it is understood that everything is taking place at a fixed frequency here. So, A at R is approximately equal to u naught by 4 pi R into e power minus j k R into integral e power j k R cap dot R prime into j s of R prime d s R prime over the surface. So, this gives you the antenna pattern. This is the function of only the direction R cap, namely the spherical in terms of spherical polar coordinates theta and phi the direction of the point where you are measuring the field. 
So I will call this as P of R prime, the pattern. Then you can write the A, you can write A of R in the far field zone as P of R cap into E power minus J K R by R. You, if you if you absorb all the factors mu naught, one by four pi, everything into the pattern function P R cap. Now from this you can calculate the magnetic field del cross A in the far field zone everything only up to order 1 by r square. So, I should write plus order 1 upon r square. Here r is the magnitude of the radial vector r. So, this is the cavity resonator here, cavity resonator r d r a or anything or c d r a or anything. Here you have a point in the far field zone and this r is much much larger than r prime. Mod r is much much larger than mod r prime as r prime varies over the surface the same as writing that r is much much larger than r prime. When I remove the subscript it means you are taking the modulus of that particular vector. So, del cross a is the magnetic field which can be written as up, up to order r. If you differentiate this, if you, differ, if you take del of r you get r cap. So, only that will contribute to 1 by r. All the other gradients of this or of this will contribute to 1 by r square. So, this will be equal to p r cap into minus j k r cap sorry it will be minus j k r cap cross p r cap r, r cap e power minus j k r by r. So, this is the far field magnetic field plus order 1 by r square. Similarly, you can calculate the far field electric field. How do you do it? Simply use the fact that del cross b is equal to j omega epsilon e in the far field zone which is same same saying that same as saying that this is equal to del cross del cross a divided by j omega epsilon ok. So, this is nothing but 1 by j omega epsilon del cross. Now, here you have del cross a already which is b here. So, you have a minus j k r cap cross p at r cap into e power minus j k r by r. Again, when you take a del cross and you want only to retain 1 by r term, you should take the del cross, the del cross will act, act only on the phase term. So, this will give you 1 upon j omega epsilon then minus j k r cap cross minus j k r cap cross p divided by r into e power minus j k r. So, in summary you can say that the magnetic field B is given by 1 uh, it will be given by del cross A which can be written as minus j k r cap cross p of r cap e power minus j k r divided by r and e will be given by minus k square times r cap cross r cap cross p r cap where p is the pattern function it depends only on the direction into e power minus j k r divided by r by j omega epsilon. In other words this is the same as minus j k by j omega epsilon k minus j k minus uh, minus j k into minus j k min, uh, this cross b and k can be written as k can be written as omega by c which is omega root mu epsilon. So, this whole thing becomes root mu, it becomes root mu by epsilon right. So, E becomes simply equal to root of mu by epsilon. The permittivity of the, me, the uh, impedance of the medium, impedance of the medium into uh, k into k cross b into k cross b, k cross b, uh, k along the, the unit vector along k n cap cross b, n cap cross b. So, in other words you have a relation that E mod E by mod b equals the impedance of the medium which is root mu by epsilon and you can calculate all the parameters on this. For example, if you want to calculate the radiated power out, you have to first calculate the pointing vector namely E cross h. This is the pointing vector in the far field zone, E is evaluated to order 1 by r and h is also evaluated to order 1 by r. So, E cross h will be evaluated to order 1 by r square. So, you can write this as you can write this as E cross E cross uh, n cap cross E 
n crap cross e divided by eta, where eta is root mu naught by epsilon naught, right. That is because you have the relation as we just saw, you got the relation that e cap is equal to uh, uh, minus eta, minus eta into n cap cross uh, n cap cross h, n cap cross h. Okay, minus eta into n cap cross h, and h is orthogonal to n. So if you look at, if you take n cap cross e, if you take n cap cross e, you are going to get uh, h. You are going to a get h, and if after dividing by eta, right? This implies that n cap cross e is equal to eta multiplied by h, right? If you take, a, if you if you use the fact, if you use the identity that n cap cross n cap cross h is equal to minus h. That is because h is orthogonal to n. n is the direction of propagation of the wave. So, n is equal to simply equal to r cap, which is equal to r divided by mod r. So, the pointing vector comes out to be simply mod e square by eta into n cap and e can be calculated in the way I just shown. e is calculated to e mod e square by, e by eta, e is calculated to 1 by r. So, mod e square is calculated to 1 by r square. So, if you integrate out over the surface, you have expressed what is mod e square mod e square is calculated in terms of just remember that minus j k n cap cross p of r cap. Let us use r cap instead instead of n cap. So, r cap cross minus j k r cap cross p of r cap divided by r. This is del cross h, this is the magnetic field in the far field zone. And, uh, your electric field is R cap cross B, R cap cross B divided by mu, divided by into J k minus J k divided by J omega epsilon, right. That, was, that came because you had del cross B is equal to del cross B is equal to mu naught, mu naught epsilon naught uh, or J del cross h is equal to j. So, the mu naught uh, epsilon naught omega into e. If you use Ampere's law with the displacement correction, correct, uh, correction term and you use the expression for b obtained from this. How did you obtain a? You got a as a using the retarded potential namely mu naught by 4 pi e power minus j k r by r into integral of j s integral of j s over j s over the surface e power j k r cap dot r dash d s r dash over the surface and this I absorbed into p. So, I wrote this as e power minus j k r by r into p of r cap. It is a pattern function. If you take del cross a you get b and you retain only the 1 by r term you get minus j k e power minus j k r by r into r cap cross p at r cap. That was, that was the value of b that you got. And if you take if you take another curl of that, you will get E. So, uh, in some sense, I can call I can uh, I, in in other words, what I can say is I can replace my I can calculate everything in terms of the pattern function P R. So the electric field will be of the form in the far field zone. The electric field at frequency omega will be of the form P R cap divided by R into some constant K naught into E power minus J K R by R. Right. That was because the magnetic field was proportional to R cap cross P and the electric field was proportional to R cap cross R cap cross P, which is proportional to P because R cap dot P is 0. R cap, R cap dot P into R cap minus R to P, R cap dot P into R cap that the radial component of the electric field would not contribute to the pointing vector. right? It is only uh, if you retain uh, just, just, just one minute, let us just go through the whole calculation again. A was nothing but mu naught by 4 pi p at r cap. I absorbed mu into this, so I wrote it as e power minus j k r by r 
P had some dependence. It could have a radi it could have a radial component also. We don't because it's just an integral of over of integral of the current density over the surface, taking the phase factor into account. So del cross A, which is B, this is equal to minus J K R cap cross P at R cap divided by R e power minus J K R. And this will contain only a theta and a phi component because you are taking the cross product with the radial unit vector. And if you look at del cross del cross A, that is the electric field is proportional to this, electric field is proportional to this and this is proportional to, uh, this is proportional to R cap cross R cap cross P at R cap into E power minus J K R by R because when you take a gradient of J E power minus J K R you get another R cap. Since you are taking del cross you will have to take the cross product of that R cap with this and this will give you R cap dot P into R cap minus R cap dot R cap into P right. So, this will have a term like R cap dot P into R cap minus R cap dot R cap into P, R cap dot R cap into P E per minus J K R by R. It is only this term which will contribute to the radiation. There will be a radial component coming from here. You can write this as, you can write this as E, E is proportional to R cap dot P into R cap minus P minus P. This is nothing but P R, the radial component of P into R cap minus here you could write it as P R into R cap plus P theta into theta cap plus P phi into phi cap and the radial component will cancel out. So, electric field will have only a theta cap and a phi cap component. That means it will have only a tangential component. This is the direction in which the wave propagates. This is the theta cap direction. This is the phi cap direction. So, the electric field is polarized around the theta phi direct P in the theta phi plane and the magnetic field will also be polarized in the theta phi plane because you can write the magnetic field as being proportional to R cap cross E. In fact, it is equal to H cap, H is equal to B divided by mu naught, B divided by mu which is equal to R cap, what is it equal to? It will be R cap cross E divided by eta from this equation. So, if you calculate uh, for example, if you look at, if you look at this E and you take R cap cross this, this term, the R cap term will drop out, right? You can see, you can write, you can write E as being proportional to R cap cross, R cap cross P which is equal to P dot R cap into R cap minus P. So, if you look at R cap cross E, what will it be? This R cap dot cross R cap will cancel out. This will be proportional to minus R cap cross P, which is proportional to the magnetic field. In proportional to the magnetic field. So, you have a picture in which you have a radial direction here and the electric field and magnetic field are, are, are polarized in the E in the phi theta phi plane, in the theta phi plane with both the E vector and the mag, uh, B vector perpendicular to each other in the far field zone. It is important to take a 1 by R square term only, right. So, in, in short you can write your E as being, uh, being proportional to P theta theta cap plus P phi phi cap and you can say this divided by R into E power minus J k R. So, if you look at the pointing vector, it comes out to be E square by 2 eta, a factor of 2 comes because you are taking time averages. You see, if you take, uh, if you take the electric field, the electric field is equal to real part of the electric field phasor into E power j omega t. Likewise, the magnetic field is equal to real part of the magnetic field phasor into E power j omega t. So, if you take E cap cross B cap and you take the time average it will be equal to simply real part of, if you write the real part of a complex number as z plus z star, z plus z bar by 2 and here also and you note that the e power 2 j omega t terms will average out to 0, then this will be simply e tilde cross h tilde ka, h tilde star divided by 2 and e power j omega t will drop out because you are, if you expand this real part it will be e tilde e power j omega t plus e tilde star e power minus j omega t by 2 and you take the cross product and ignore e power 2 j omega t terms, 2 j, 2 j omega t terms which average out to 0, 
that will give you this thing and this is equal to if you substitute for h tilde as e tilde e t r uh, r cap cross e tilde divided by eta if you substitute here you will get mod e tilde square by 2 eta into r cap where your mod e tilde square is given by this so you can say that the far field electric far field pointing vector is given by e tilde square by 2 eta into r cap which is equal to p theta of r cap square p theta of r cap square mod square plus p phi of r cap square by 2 eta multiplied by r cap into r square because electric field is proportional to 1 by r in the far field zone. So, if you want to calculate the total power radiated what will you do? You will do e tilde square by 2 eta multiplied by you take the dot product with e r this is the pointing vector right. So, the total power radiated is what? It's s dot r cap d s over a surface where the surface is the surface of a sphere of infinite radius that is as r goes to infinity. So, you are using r square into d, sol d solid angle d omega is a solid angle at the along the direction r cap this r this r square and this r square will cancel out this r square and this r square will cancel out as r goes to infinity it will retain it will be a, it will give you a non zero contribution whereas if you have taken higher order powers in the electric in the expansion of the electric field and the magnetic field if you have taken order 1 by r square 1 by r cube they will all give after taking a cross product terms of order 1 by r cube to the pointing vector it will give a contribution of 1 by order 1 by r cube and lower to the pointing vector which will all contribute to 0 because if you take 1 by r cube and you multiply it by dsr the surface element this is equal to 1 integral of 1 by r cube into r square d omega r cap and r square by 1 by r cube is 1 by r. So, this will give you 1 by r into integral d omega r which will go to 0 as r goes to infinity. That is why we chose to take only order 1 by r terms in the electric field and in the magnetic field when we compute the pointing vector radiation the total radiated pattern. So, the total this this 1 by r square and this r square will cancel out. So, this will give you as r goes to infinity simply a surface term 1 by 1 half of integral p theta square plus p phi square p theta square plus p phi square into d omega r cap over the surface that will give you the total power radiated. So, the total power radiated total power radiated radiated by the antenna by the R D R A by the D R A dielectric resonator antenna is equal to integral mod E square by 2 eta R square into R square D omega R cap this R square will cancel out sorry it is uh, it is mod p square p square. So, the total power radiated is what it is integral of mod e square by 2 eta into r cap dot r cap d s r cap this is the total power radiated which is equal to mod p square mod p of r square p tangential of r p tangential that is only p theta square and p phi square will contribute to this. So, it is a angular function divided by 2 eta r square multiplied by r cap dot r cap is 1 d s r is r square d omega r cap. So, this will cancel out. So, it will give you a sing, an integral as simply the total power radiated w is equal to 1 by 2 eta times integral p theta square p theta r cap square plus p phi r cap square r cap square into d omega r cap over the entire solid angle 4 pi solid 4 pi steridians of solid angle that gives you throttle power radiated and you can calculate p theta and p phi in terms of the current. So, it will be a some quantity proportional to the current square in the case of a finite body which has been finite antenna which has been supplied by a current i. So, this will give you the radiation resistance immediately if you equate this to half mod i square into radiation resistance. So, you get the radiation resistance as simply 2 by mod i square times w r w is the power radiated by the antenna. So, in the case of a DRA what we are doing is we are taking the conducting surfaces perfectly conducting surfaces 
calculating the surface current on these surfaces using the formula n cap cross h is equal to j s. Then from each surface I will compute the radiation pattern by applying the Green's function, retarded Green's function and or equality the formula which I just mentioned to get the total power radiated by each surface and you will proceed. In the case of a perfect magnetic conducting surface PMC, what do you do? In the case of PMC, you have you have to use the fact that n cap cross E is equal to JMS, the magnetic current. So, you will calculate the electric field in the usual way using the st standard analysis, but with its altered boundary condition. You will calculate the magnetic surface magnetic current density, surface magnetic current density and then you will apply the Green's function. You see Maxwell's equations are uh, have the duality re relation, they are they are they remain inter they remain unchanged if E goes to H, H goes to minus E, J and J M are interchange, epsilon and mu are interchange, rho and rho m are interchange. So, if you use that fact you get the solution, you get the solution, you can write E s in the presence of only magnetic currents, the far field pattern will be simply del cross F just as you had H is equal to del cross A by mu. So, this will be del cross F by epsilon. Now, there will be an epsilon. You just, just see what was H? E goes to H, H goes to minus E, right. So, you had H was del cross A, likewise you will have E will be minus del cross F and epsilon and mu are interchange. So, this divided by epsilon naught. So, you can write the electric field in terms of a electric vector potential del cross F and you can calculate F in the same way as you calculated uh, as you calculated uh, the electric field from the as you calculated the electric field from the magnetic vector potential. Then you use the fact that uh, you uh, okay just let us write down the equations and see you have del cross E is equal to del cross E is equal to uh, minus j omega mu h minus j m minus j m and you had in the in the absence of any electric current you had del cross b del cross h is equal to j there was no j j omega epsilon e and del dot there is no magnetic charge so del dot h is equal to 0 and del dot E is also 0, there is no electric charge. So, in the case when there is only a magnetic current as in the case of a rectangular dielectric resonator antenna in which the surfaces are perfect magnetic conductors, you have this sort of an equation. So, corresponding to just as you put H, was, H is equal to del cross A, you can write E as del cross F divided by epsilon and if you substitute this into uh, this equation. If you substitute for E into this equation, you get an equation for F which will be the retarded potential formula, right. You put uh, in, the, in the absence, uh, okay, let, let us see how to analyze this whole thing globally. You have switched off, let us say, let us see, uh, let, let us do it this way. Del dot E is equal to 0, so E is del cross F by epsilon. Now, if you substitute this into del cross H is equal to J omega epsilon E, what do you get? You get del cross H is equal to J omega into del cross F. Right, which is same as saying that you put a you put a minus sign here, okay, because of the duality relation that E goes to minus H and H goes to E. So, this becomes minus j omega epsilon del cross f which is same as saying del cross h plus j omega f this is 0 which is same as saying that h plus j omega f can be written as minus del of some magnetic scalar potential phi m or equivalently h is equal to minus del phi m minus j omega f just as you had the electric field was minus del minus del phi e minus j omega a you had a, you have a corresponding relation here 
and likewise you apply the Lorentz gauge condition here namely you apply the Lorentz gauge condition in the electric case as del dot A is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu phi right in order to arrive at the wave equation you can choose a gauge that is because the fields do not change if you make a Lorentz gauge transformation A goes to A plus del F and F and uh, phi goes to goes to phi minus j omega f in the frequency domain or dou f by dou t in the time domain. So, you could choose f so that del dot of the new del dot of the new vector potential del dot a tilde a, a prime is 0 by solving Poisson's equation for f. So, likewise you could do the same thing here and you will end up with an equation for you will end up with an equation uh, if you take del dot h you will get and put del dot f is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu phi m you will end up with wave equations or Helmholtz equations for phi m and f right just as you just as you got in the electric case when you had money an electric uh, current density and an, and an electric charge density. Here what will happen is that you take del dot h and put it equal to 0 what do you get you get del square phi m del square phi m minus j omega del dot f del dot h and that is 0 here there is no charge if there were a charge you could put rho m by uh, del rho m by epsilon rho m by mu naught your rho m by mu if there were a charge and then when you apply the gauge condition namely del dot f is equal to uh, del dot f is equal to uh, minus j uh, del dot f is equal to minus just as you apply the Lorentz gauge condition you apply the gauge condition here del dot f is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu into phi m. If you apply that you will get the wave equation for phi m namely del square phi m plus k square phi m is equal to minus rho m by epsilon naught where k square is omega square epsilon mu omega square epsilon mu right. Likewise if you apply the gauge condition to uh, if you substitute into the second equation if you substitute for f if you, you if you substitute if you put del cross f by epsilon naught or del cross f by epsilon naught is equal to e and you uh, take into account uh, course here you are not taking into account uh, see idly speaking you have to take everything into account right if you have if you have or electric if you have electric charges electric currents magnetic charges magnetic currents everything in the picture if you have then what are the equations the equations are del dot e is equal to rho by epsilon naught rho electric charge then del dot h is equal to rho m by mu naught then del cross h is equal to j e plus j omega epsilon let us say mu ok not it is not free space j omega epsilon e and del cross e is equal to minus j m minus j omega mu into h. If you take a system in which there are all magnetic charges magnetic currents electric charges and electric currents then first you switch off the electric charges and electric currents and solve it uh, solve the equations then you switch off the magnetic charges and magnetic currents solve the equations and superpose the two solutions then you will get the general solution for uh, the situation when both magnetic charges magnetic currents electric charges and electric currents are present. So, you will get an equation like E if there were only electric charges and electric currents then it will be minus del phi E minus j omega A and when there are no electric charges and no current the solution is minus del cross f by epsilon. So, the general solution here will become uh, the general solution here will become uh, the superposition of these two. Likewise, if you look at h if there were no magnetic charges and no magnetic currents the solution will be del cross a divided by mu and when there are both electric charges and electric currents it will be minus del phi m minus j omega f right. So, then you apply the Lorentz gauge condition namely del dot a is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu into uh, into phi 
and likewise del dot f is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu into phi m phi e and phi m. These conditions can be applied because if you make a transformation namely a goes to a plus del f del f e let us say del f and uh, phi goes to phi minus j omega f and similarly f goes to f plus del g and phi m goes to phi m minus j omega f m minus j omega g under these transformation the electric field and magnetic field do not change at all del cross f for example will become what del cross f will be del cross will go to del cross f plus del cross del g del cross g del cross del g is zero if you substitute for phi e uh, if you if you substitute for phi e phi e minus j omega f and for a you put a plus del f then cancellations will take place this will not change this term will not change likewise this term will not change this term also will not change. So, you are free to choose the, if you choose the function you can choose the function del f f in such a way that divergence of this vanishes right that will give you a equation of the form del square f is equal to minus del dot a which you can solve it is the Poisson equation for f likewise you can choose your f your g so that del dot of the new f vanishes namely del square g is equal to minus del dot f then that will vary. So, you can always choose the gauge condition you can always uh, of course, you are choosing the here you are choosing the gauge condition. So, that del dot a vanishes and del dot f vanishes that is the coulomb gauge, but you can choose in the Lorentz gauge you choose a diff you choose it different in a different way you can choose it. So, that del, da del dot a dash where a dash is the new uh, magnetic vector potential del dot a dash is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu phi dash and also del dot f dash is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu phi m dash. So, if you choose this for example, if you apply the first condition del dot a dash gives you what it gives you del dot a plus del square f is equal to minus j omega epsilon mu minus j omega epsilon mu phi dash phi dash phi dash means phi e dash ok. So, phi e dash is nothing but phi e minus j omega f which is equivalent to saying that del square f plus k square f is equal to some source term or equivalently f satisfies a Helmholtz equation del square plus k square f is some source term built out of del dot a and phi e right. So, del, del square f plus omega square epsilon mu f is equal to minus del dot a minus j omega epsilon mu phi e. So, you can solve this Helmholtz equation for f using the retarded Green's function likewise you can solve for likewise you can solve for uh, the function g by applying the Lorentz gauge condition in for f and phi m. If you do that you get wave equation and substitute this into the Maxwell equations what you will get is del square a plus k square a is equal to minus mu naught j j e del square phi plus k square phi e is equal to minus rho by epsilon naught rho e by epsilon naught then del square a del square f plus k square f plus k square f is equal to minus j m minus uh, you will get epsilon naught j m j m and del square uh, phi m plus k square phi m is equal to minus uh, minus rho m by mu naught by duality you get this. So, all a phi e f and phi m in the Lorentz gauge satisfy standard wave equations with sources. So, you can solve this in terms of the retarded Green's function for example, you can write a as mu naught by 4 pi integral e power minus j k mod r minus r in free space by mod r minus r prime multiplied by j e of r prime d 3 r prime. Similarly, you can write f as uh, epsilon naught by 4 pi integral e power minus j k mod r minus r prime by mod r minus r prime into j m of r prime j m of r prime d 3 r prime and so on. And finally, you when you and likewise you get the a solution for phi ok phi e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught integral rho e of 
r prime e power minus j k mod r minus r prime by mod r minus r prime d3 r prime. And similarly, for phi, uh, for phi m, once you have the solutions for a, phi e, f, and phi m, you can substitute them into the expressions which we derived earlier for the expressions for the fields in terms of the potentials, and you get the complete picture, complete radiation force. So, if you apply this to a RDRA, what happens? You have a perfect magnetic conducting surface, perfect magnetic conducting surface. On the side walls, you have only JMS. So, you have JMS given by n cross e n cross e on the surface that is the magnetic surface surface magnetic current density from this i will calculate the far field electric vector potential as what this is equal to epsilon by 4 pi integral jms over the surface r prime e power minus jk mod r minus r prime by mod r minus r prime d3 r prime or in the far field approximation you get f of r prime at the frequency omega okay this is equal to epsilon naught by 4 pi into e power minus j k r by r into integral of uh, jms at r prime into e power j k r cap dot r prime d s r prime over the surface s. So, you can use the same formalism now, you can calculate del cross f by epsilon naught by epsilon, this is equal to the electric field and the magnetic field will be equal to will be given by del cross e uh, del cross e is equal to minus j omega mu h. So, equality h will be equal to minus 1 by j omega mu into del cross e. So, uh, that will cancel out mu naught epsilon naught mu naught mu into epsilon sorry it will be 1 by j omega mu epsilon into del cross del cross f which is del cross del cross f of this sort. Okay. And you can evaluate this in the same way as you did in the electric case electric perfect electric conductor case. You can calculate h you can calculate e you evaluate this integral a function of r prime it will be of course a p m of r prime because your p m means for the magnetic conducting surface situation. Magnetic conducting surface situation this will give you p m of r prime. So, you get in the far field zone f at r f at r is equal to epsilon naught by 4 pi r e power minus j k r into p m of r prime. And for example, to calculate del cross of this if you want the electric field in the far field zone it will be equal to del cross f divided by epsilon which is equal to epsilon by 4 pi 1 by 4 pi r epsilon not epsilon naught okay 1 by 4 pi r into uh, minus j k r cap cross p m r p m r cap into e power minus j k r okay so instead of p you are having p m here you have the electric field instead of magnetic field you have the electric field here and the magnetic field will be given by taking another k cross here right. So, the magnetic field will be in the far field zone this will be uh, this will be uh, 1 by j omega mu epsilon 1 by j omega mu epsilon del cross del cross f. So, another minus j k r, r, ca, r cap cross minus j k r cap cross p m okay, into e power minus j k r by r j k r by r. So, in the same way you can calculate the pointing vector and the total power radiated by the R D R A consisting of a perfect magnetic conducting surface. Now, we will consider a very interesting situation which is called the situation of a plasmonic antenna in which you have a dielectric resonator antenna filled with a plasma. So, you can take for example, some sort of an antenna of this sort a dielectric resonator of some shape and this is filled with a plasma. So, what is a plasma? A plasma is a conducting fluid, okay. it has got ions. Let us say that it is just one type of ion inside this plasma and what happens it is described by a Boltzmann distribution function. Boltzmann distribution function and that function is f is a function of t 
r and v. r is the position of the particle, v is the velocity of the particle, f is the number of particles at time t per unit volume in phase space. So, f of t comma r comma v d 3 r d 3 v is the number of particles which occupy the position volume d 3 r that is they are contained within a volume of size d 3 r centered at r and have velocities in the range d 3 v around the velocity v this is the number of particles. You have a conservation law that the total rate of change of number of the number of particles within this volume phase volume that must be 0. You do not have any because you cannot have any creation or destruction of particles that is what we are assuming. Of course, you can consider a situation in which there are external probes and external sources which in which uh, which create particles within this system, but we are not assuming that you are just you have a conducting fluid filling this uh, cavity filling this cavity. So, you note that the r and v are the positions of the of a particular particle and because they follow the Hamilton's equations of motion the phase volume is conserved. It means if you look at d by dt of d 3 r into d 3 v that is equal to 0 because r and v follow Hamiltonian's Hamilton's equations of motion that means the phase volume is conserved. So, the law of conservation of particles gives you the relation d by dt of f t r v this is equal to 0 or equivalently dou f by dou t plus d r by d t dot del r f plus d v by d t dot del v f this must be 0, but if you have collisions then you must take into account the fact that there can be creation of particles or annihilation of particles due to collisions. So, you put a collision term we will analyze what this collision term is exactly d r by d t can be replaced by v and d v by d t can be replaced by force by the acceleration which is the force per unit mass. So, if the force per unit mass of a particle is f of r v located at r v then you can write the equation the Boltzmann kinetic transport equation as rho f t r v plus v dot rho by v dot del r the gradient with respect to r of f t r v plus d v by d t which is equal to 1 upon m times if f is the force per unit mass if I do if I denote f by the force per unit mass this is f it may depend on time also force per unit mass of a particle located at r and moving with a velocity v this can be written dot del v acting on f t r v v this is equal to dou f by dou t due to collisions increase in the number of particles due to collisions this is called the Boltzmann kinetic transport equation. kinetic transport equation for a plasma. It is the equation of conservation of particles. So, uh, this equation was written by Boltzmann. Boltzmann also derived a formula for the collision term in terms of if you are by assuming binary collisions. What he did was he said that uh, collision term he said that suppose the, the, the medium consists of two if you take just two particles interacting with each other this is moving with a velocity v and this is moving with a velocity v 1 located at the same point r this comes and collides with it or more precisely it interacts with the potential generated by this particle and gets scattered off to infinity like this. So, it goes to infinity with a velocity of v 1 dash and this particle moves to another phase volume it goes with velocity v dash. So, you have an initial collision you have the initial parameters defined by the initial velocities of the colliding particles v and v and the final velocity is given by v 1 prime and v prime. So, it moves out of the phase volume v 1 v moves out of the phase volume. So, if you if sigma v you see the scattering in nor, normal uh, two body scattering theory two body scatter rather the way Rutherford described the scattering of uh, positively of alpha particles by a positively charged nucleus due to the repulsive potential. You have one particle you have one body here another body moves with a velocity let us say v relative to this at rest here the relative velocity should be taken as v 1 minus v. So, it moves with a velocity relative velocity this with, with respect to this particle and the direction of this velocity is at a distance s from this particle. So, if you look at if if you have na, n is the density of the incident particles then the number of particles or let us say you have just a single particle. So, the single particle per you have n particles per unit volume moving with a velocity v. So, this is the incident flux. So, number of particles moving per unit area per unit time is this 
and these are located between S2, S plus with an impact parameter S to S plus dS. What is the impact parameter? Impact parameter S is the distance of the uh, particle, the distance of the line of the velocity of the incident particle from the scattered scattering center, from the scattering center. So, within S and S plus dS you have a stream of particles. So, you draw, draw, draw a circle of radius S, draw a circle of radius S plus dS and look that and within this annulus, this annulus has an area of 2 pi S dS. So, the total number of particles that flow per unit time, total number of incident particles that flow per unit time within an annulus of radius S to S plus dS is given by N V into 2 pi S dS. So, total number of particles and a particle at at a particle at a distance s will get eventually scattered to a to an angle uh, to an angle theta to a solid angle which makes to the final angle theta with a, to a final point which makes an angle theta with the scattering center so this is theta phi so uh, the solid angle around this the differential solid angle around theta phi is sin theta d theta d phi it is d omega of theta phi theta phi so these particles get scattered to the solid angle and uh, you look at the number of particles which flow which cross unit solid angle in unit time after scattering. The number of particles which cross unit solid angle per unit time after scattering is given by how much? It is given by n v 2 pi s. Now, you know theta as a function of s you can calculate using two body scattering theory. So, theta as a function of s is known. So, you can write down d s by d theta also. Right. If you invert the relation S theta between S and theta, you get S as a function of theta. So, this becomes 2 pi n v 2 uh, n v 2 pi S d S by d theta. I can divide by also a sin theta. I can put a 2 pi. I can put a 2 pi sin theta d theta. This is the total solid angle, but it is preferable to use instead of 2 pi, you use d theta d phi. That is the solid angle. Phi varies over 0 to 2 pi because of the cylindrical symmetry of the problem. It will, the physics will be invariant under rotations, under change in phi. That is, rotations around the axis, uh, axis passing through the scattering center and parallel to the direction of the incident beam. So you see that the scattering. If you, def, you you find out the total number of total number of par scattered particles, scattered particles per unit solid angle, unit solid angle, total number of particles per unit solid angle divided by total number of total flux of incident particles, incident particles per unit solid angle at theta phi by total number by total flux of incident particles this is called the scattering cross section cross section and this I denote by sigma it will depend on the initial velocity of the particle the speed of the particle it will depend on and it will depend on the final uh, and the direction of the final scattering sigma is a function of v and theta phi or equality it is a function of v and the unit vector along which the final scattered particle goes. So, if you calculate this how much does it come out to be sigma of v n cap is equal to 2 pi s d s into n number of particles particle num, number of particles per unit volume going with a velocity v. So, that is the incident flux and all these particles go to uh, sin theta d theta and then sin theta d theta d phi and uh, uh, you can replace phi by d phi by 2 pi here, you can put a 2 pi here. Okay. So, uh, n is the incident, uh, the density of the incident beam. So, so many particles get scattered within the solid angle 2 pi sin theta d theta or per unit solid angle how many will get scattered into sin theta d theta d phi if you in within the solid angle d theta d phi so many will get scattered. So, if you multiply this by sin theta d theta d phi the solid angle 
this will give you a formula for the scatter, scattering cross section namely the number of particles uh, the number of particles uh, you have to divide by uh, the number of particles which get scattered to a solid angle 2 pi sin theta d theta. So, you put 2 pi sin theta here 2 pi sin theta d theta this is the total number of particles scattered and that is equal to the number of incident particles which can be written as this divided by d theta multiplied by d theta right or equivalent to your sigma v n you see sigma v n if you multiply the scattering cross section by the solid angle into which they get scattered 2 pi sin theta d theta then uh, uh, that will give you the total number of incident particles which cross which cross the impact parameter s to s plus d s and that is given by per unit time. So, uh, which cross a unit which cross the area falling between the annulus between of between impact parameter s to s plus d s. So, sigma v n cap can be written as uh, simply uh, if you cancel out the 2 pi and the sin theta it can be written as s of theta into d s by d theta divided by sin theta divided by sin theta sin theta divided by sin theta into n into v total number of particles total number of particles uh, of course into n you are assuming that there is one particle one particle incident one particle per unit volume or if there if the flux is if n into v is if you are dividing going to divide this by the flux also this is the total number of particles you see you have to do it this way the total scattering cross section sigma of n and v is given by if you have just one particle between s to s plus d s then you have one part it gets scattered to uh, a solid angle between theta and the, uh, and between the, between the, it gets scattered to a solid angle between theta and theta plus d theta and phi and phi plus d phi. So, 2 pi s into uh, d s is the area s depends on theta and uh, you have one particle which crosses this and a particle which goes between s to s plus d s gets scattered to theta to t theta plus d theta. So, this divided by sin theta divided by sin theta multiplied by sin theta d theta this is the cross uh, scattering uh, let us just try to let us try to put this in more sensible terms you know the scattering parameter as a function of theta because you know theta as a function of s. So, you can write down the expression for the scattering cross section it will not depend on the density of incident particles the total the total number of part total number of particles which get scattered the total number of incident particles say n was the incident density. So, 2 pi s d s into n this is the total into v this is the total number of particles crossing uh, the area s to s the annulus s to s plus d s and all these particles get scattered to within the solid angle 2 pi sin theta d theta it all these get scattered within this solid angle. So, per unit solid solid angle how much do you have per unit solid angle the number of particles which go is 2 pi sin theta d theta all these particles get scattered to within a solid angle of so much. So, the number of particles which get scattered within a solid angle between uh, along the direction theta is this much and the incident flux you are going to divide this by the incident flux the incident flux is n into v ok. So, that n into v will cancel out which means that 2 pi also cancel out and you get sigma as a function of the direction sigma as a function of the velocity sigma as a function of the velocity and the direction theta phi here it would not depend on phi is simply equal to s d s by d theta divided by sin theta and you know s as a function of theta from two body scattering theory by writing down the equations of motion of a particle in the potential generated by another particle. So, now if you look at the Boltzmann problem you have number of particles within solid angle uh, sorry you have number of particles located at the position r moving with velocity v having positions located per unit volume having velocity in the range v to v, v over v, having velocities v centered around having velocity in the range d 3 v centered around v this is the total number of scattering centers and the number of 
particle incident particles what is the density of the incident particles it is F T R V 1 D 3 V 1. So, many incident particles you have within the velocity volume V D 3 V 1 located at R and each of these particles interacts with each particle in this set. So, this is the scattering set this is the incident set each of the particles in the incident set react interacts with each of the particles in the in the scattering set in the scattered scattering center set and get scattered. So, the number of interactions which takes place is a product of these two numbers T R V 1 multiplied by F T R V into D 3 V 1 into D 3 V. This is the total number of interactions which take place and if you multiply this by the solid angle what is the relative velocity it is sigma V 1 minus V comma it gets scattered to a direction n cap. So, so many interactions are there and the flux of the incident particles is the density is the number of particles per unit volume multiplied by the relative velocity between the two. So, you have to multiply this by mod V 1 minus V. So, this is the incident flux multiplied by the scattering cross section this gives you the number of particles which go within us which get scattered out to a solid angle n cap right and if you integrate this quantity over all possible incident velocities v 1 keeping d 3 v outside because you are looking at the number of particles in the scattering uh, which fall in the scattering center set centered around the velocity v. If you integrate this over all solid angles and over all incident velocities this will give you the net rate of decrease of the number of particles within the phase volume T R V within the phase volume R V D 3 R D 3 V within the phase volume D 3 R D 3 V centered around R V it will give you the rate at which it decreases likewise particles. So, a particle with velocity V 1 interacts with the scattering center with velocity V and goes to V 1 prime V prime likewise you can have a particle with velocity V prime interacting with a velo particle with a velocity V prime coming into the phase volume V 1 and V that will contribute to an increase in the number of particles due to scattering. So, if you take both these into account you can see that the rate net rate of change due to collisions due to binary collisions net rate of increase of the number of particles within the phase volume D 3 R D 3 V due to collisions is equal to simply integral sigma of mod first you will take the decrease. So, V 1 minus V comma n into mod V 1 minus V multiplied by f of T R 1 V R V 1 R is the same it is it is the same position only the velocities can change into f of T R V then here you have D 3 V 1 D 3 V 1 into D omega n this is the net rate at which it decreases and the net rate at which it increases per unit phase volume you are saying right. So, you have to cancel out the D 3 V and you will have plus integral now a particle with velocity V 1 prime interacts with a particle with a velocity V prime coming along the direction n cap. So, you put a relative velocity between the two is V 1 prime minus V prime ok and after scattering it falls within the phase volume the two particles the first particles first incident particle falls within a phase volume of within has a final velocity of V 1 and the and the second particle has a velocity V. So, you will put a f of t r v 1 prime into f of t r v prime multiplied by this thing sigma n and here you will take d 3 v 1 prime all possible incident velocities into d omega n cap over all possible solid angles you integrate. So, here you have a negative sign because particles get scattered and move out of the phase volume r v whereas here you have an increase in the number of particles in phase volume R v because uh, after particles get scattered out of the phase volume R prime V prime they come into the velocity into the phase volume R and V. Now, you note one thing from the theory of binary collisions if you look at a binary collision you can approximate it by an elastic collision in which the momentum total momentum remains constant particles are of equal mass. So, V 1 plus V is equal to V 1 prime plus V prime and also the energy is conserved namely V 1 square mod V 1 square plus mod V square is equal to mod V 1 prime square plus mod V prime square. From these two equations you can show very easily that the relative velocity is invariant under the collision that is V 1 minus V 
becomes same as v1 prime minus v prime these two are the same by manipulating these two equations namely the equations of conservation of momentum and energy so here i can replace this v1 prime minus v by the final difference v1 minus v and here also i can replace it by v1 minus v and also because of hamiltonian dynamics the phase volume remains conserved that means d3 v1 into d3 v is same as d3 v1 prime into d3 v prime so i can replace here d3 v1 prime into d3 v here you have actually d3 d3 v prime d3 v prime here you have d3 v since you are fixing d3 v you first write d3 v prime into d3 v1 prime as d3 v1 into d3 v and then you integrate over you remove the prime here and you remove and you remove the prime here so d3 v comes out here here you have also d3 v coming out so per unit phase volume around this velocity v you have this expression for the collision term of course you cannot change so this equation the collision the rate of increase the rate of increase in the number of particles per per, per phase volume due to collisions that can be written as integral uh, f1 prime f prime minus f1 f multiplied by mod v1 minus v minus v into f into uh, the scattering cross section mod v1 minus v comma n cap into uh, d3 v1 into d omega n right where by prime i mean you are using an abbreviated notation namely f1 prime means f1 of t r1 prime r prime sorry f1 of t r v1 prime because scattering it is taking place at the same position r only the velocities are different so f prime is an abbreviated notation for f t r and v prime and f1 means f of t r v1 and f means f of t r v right and you can express your v prime and v to make sense of this of this integral you have to express v v1 prime and v prime in terms of v1 and v and of course the direction of the direction of scattering and so you have use make use of the momentum conservation equation namely v1 prime plus v prime equal to v1 vector plus v vector and v1 square plus v prime square equals v1 square v1 prime square plus v prime square is v1 square plus v square so uh, from these two equations we derive that v1 prime minus v prime mod is equal to mod of v1 minus v so the direction of the final position the final direction v1 prime minus v the relative direction the final relative direction after scattering can be written as mod v1 minus v times some the direction of scattering n prime relative to the relative to the initial direction v1 prime minus v prime can be written as mod v1 minus v into n so if you substitute this equation into this equation you can express v1 prime and v prime in terms of v1 v and n n cap and so when you integrate over n this becomes a consistent equation so the boltzmann equation is conveniently written as do f by do t plus v dot del r f plus f of t r v uh, f of r t if the force is not per unit force is per unit mass then per mass of the particle dot del v multiplied by f is equal to do f by do t collision this is called the boltzmann kinetic transport equation from this equation we can derive boltzmann's h theorem which says the entropy of the particle increases where if provided you use the expression for do f by do t in terms of by the expression which we just derived in terms of binary collisions in the case of a cavity resonator you have a plasma filling in this liquid the plasma liquid filling this volume and the you have a let us say the charge of each particle in the plasma is q and the mass of each charged particle is m within the plasma so what is ft rv ft rv is the force exerted on the particle on each particle of the plasma by the electromagnetic field it is given by the lorentz force expression so q times e of tr plus v cross btr is the expression for the force exerted on a charged particle 
by the electromagnetic field within the resonator cavity. So, you can write down Boltzmann's equation as dou f by dou t for the plasma within plus v dot del r f plus q by m e plus v cross b d dot del v acting on f and that is equal to dou f by dou t call. For dou f by dou t call we make a linearized approximation this is called the Vlasov approximation. It is called the Vlasov approximation. Vlasov was a Russian physicist. Vlasov approximation or also called the relaxation time approximation. Relaxation time approximation which says that the rate at which the collisions cause the number of particles per phase within a unit phase volume to increase with time is equal to the equilibrium distribution F naught R V minus F of R V F T R V divided by the velocity time constant. It means if the actual distribution function is smaller than the equilibrium distribution function then it will increase due to collisions. If the actual distribution is more than the equilibrium distribution function then the collisions will cause it to decrease. That is in either case you are propelling the whole system towards equilibrium. The whole system is driven towards equilibrium. So, we write this as F naught minus F by tau V. This is an approximation to the collision term. In fact, it can be shown that this approximation can be derived from the uh, from the collision term approximate from the collision term analysis and uh, uh, you can also derive the Fokker Planck equation from this equation by making certain approximations. If you want the details you read the book by Landau and Lifshitz on physical kinetics. Anyway, our aim here is to do the following. We want to describe the modes of oscillation of the plasma within the cavity and when the plasma oscillates then the, there is a change in the current density and when there is a change in the current density then the radiation pattern in the far field zone gets affected. We want to derive these, uh, these facts from the equations, from the basic equations. So, here what we will do is we use the standard method for analyzing this equation is perturbation theory. So, in perturbation theory first you note what is the equilibrium distribution function. The equilibrium distribution function should be the Maxwell Boltzmann density. This should be the Maxwell Boltzmann density. Maxwell Boltzmann Gibbs density. The Gibbs density which says that the density is proportional to exponential minus E by k t where E is the energy of the particle and t is the temperature of the system and k is Boltzmann's constant. So, this can be written as exponential minus 1 by k t. The total energy is the kinetic energy half m v square and plus q times the electric potential. If the potential if you assume that the electric potential is a constant it does not vary with time. So, this should satisfy the equilibrium Boltzmann equation. Let us check that it satisfies indeed that is indeed satisfies. So, what is the equilibrium Boltzmann equation? dou f by dou t should be 0 in equilibrium. So, you should have dou f by dou t plus v dot del r f f 0 f 0 f 0 stands for equilibrium plus q times phi r that is the force per unit mass by m there is no magnetic field or if you want you can have a static magnetic field q times the electric field. What is the electric field? plus q by m times the electric field is minus del phi r minus del phi r plus v cross there is a can constant magnetic field which does not depend on time or it may depend on time also. The, but it, since you are considering the equilibrium situation it does not depend on time. So, dot del v acting on f 0 you have to show that this is 0. So, dou f by dou f 0 by dou t is 0 because the Maxwell equilibrium Maxwell, Maxwell Boltzmann distribute density does not depend upon the depend on time we are assuming the potential electrostatic potential to be time invariant. So, if you apply this to F 0 what is del r of F 0? Del r of F 0 is nothing but del r of e to the power minus 1 by k t phi r plus m v square by 2 divided by the partition function which is an integral of the numerator over all positions and velocities. So, if you take the 
gradient of this, the gradient will touch only the electric potential. So, this will give you minus del phi, this will give you del of phi r as a function of r divided by k t, k t with a negative sign multiplied by f 0. And if you take del v of this, what do you get? You have to say, you have to calculate the gradient with respect to the velocity of this. So, del v of f 0 will give you simply minus m v by k t. Del v will touch only the second term which will give you m into v by k t into f 0. So, but v dot v cross b is 0. If you take v cross b dot v that is 0. So, this term will cancel out. This term will give you v dot del r f 0 will give you v dot v dot del r is minus del phi r by k t into f 0 f 0 and the second term will be u plus q by m. So, there is also v r dot del v by v del phi r uh, v r dot v dot del r f 0 v dot the gradient of f 0. The gradient of f 0 is there should have been a factor of q here right. The energy is the charge times the potential. So, q into phi. So, you will have a factor of q here. Here you will get q by m into minus del phi dot del v. Del v will give you m v by k t. This m and m will cancel out and this minus q del phi by k t uh, minus q del phi by k t v dot del r is minus del phi by k t plus q by m times minus del phi dot del v. So, del, del v is minus m v by k t. So, two minuses will cancel out. So, del phi dot m v del, del phi dot v by k t this is v dot. So, this term is nothing but q by k t into v dot del phi del phi whereas, this term is v by k t into minus q dot del phi. So, the two will cancel out everything becomes 0 and you have seen we, we come to the remarkable conclu conclusion that the Gibbs density or the equilibrium Maxwell Boltzmann density does satisfy the Boltzmann kinetic transport equation provided there are no collisions provided there are no collisions. So, now we look at we assume that the plasma within the cavity resonator is a small perturbation of the Maxwell Boltzmann density. That means, you assume that f of t r v f of t r v can be written as the equilibrium density f of r v plus delta f t r v where this is small and then we can study the oscillations of these modes. So, substituting this into the Boltzmann equation and equating first order perturbation terms. The 0th order perturbation term is simply the Maxwell Boltzmann equation which we saw is, sat is satisfied. So, if you look at the first order perturbation terms in the Boltzmann kinetic transport equation, it is dou by dou t of delta f t r v plus d r by d t v dot del r v dot del r delta f t r v t r v plus q by m times there is an electric field which varies there is a small part of which the electric field electric field varies with time it is given by the equilibrium electric field which you apply from outside corresponding which uh, which uh, defines the equilibrium density which defines the equilibrium Maxwell Boltzmann density plus a small perturbation to the electric field which could vary with time. Likewise the magnetic field consists of an equilibrium magnetic field plus a small perturbing comp perturbation component which varies with time. So, you have this. So, delta E plus V cross delta B delta B comma del V of delta F. But now, since the electric field and magnetic field are small here to get a first order perturbation quantity you have to use the equilibrium density here F 0 R V. Because the product of two small quantities is very small the product of two first order two quantities of the first order of smallness is of the second order of smallness. So, to get first order of smallness terms everywhere because we are dealing with the equations only up to first order perturbation. So, you take the first order perturbation here and you get this and you will also have a term like q by m times E 0. E 0 is minus del phi 0 the unperturbed term plus V cross B 0 dot del v into delta f. You get such an extra term here. Here you perturb, here you keep it constant. 
E 0 is a function of 1 er, B 0 is a function of 1 er and you get this, you get this term and the sum of these two terms of all these terms is equal to the rate of change of collision which can be written as minus delta f by tau v in the relaxation time approximation scenario. So, you see everything falls in the smooth space, ideally speaking what happens is that the perturbation delta v in the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function that satisfies a linear equation, a linear differential partial differential equation because you have linearized everything and normally, uh, normally uh, if you, if there is no, if there is no of course, if there is no B0 and E0, no equilibrium electric field or equilibrium magnetic field then this term will drop out. So, ideally speaking what you can do is you can express this equation as dou by dou T of delta F T R V multiplied by a linear partial differential operator in R and V okay, acting on delta F T R V a linear partial differential operator and that is uh, that linear partial differential operator is given by as we just saw L of R V is given by 1 by tau v, 1 by tau v plus v dot del r plus v dot del r plus q by m into uh, e 0, e 0 r plus v cross b 0 r dot del v acting on delta f and you also have a term. So, you have a source term here which is equal to minus q by m into delta E t, delta E t r plus v cross delta B t r dot del v acting on F 0. So, it depends on the electric field perturbations. So, this side this L R V does not contain the perturbed electric field, it contains only the unperturbed electric field and the perturb perturbation to the electric field is given by this which is another linear functional of the electric field perturbations and the magnetic field perturbations. So, in principle you can take for example, the Fourier transform with respect to time of this equation that will give you j omega times the Fourier transform of the distribution function in that with respect to time I call it as this right. So, R V here here if you take the Fourier transform with respect to time, the, none of these, this operator is a time independent operator. So, I can take the Fourier transform inside, it becomes L of R V into delta F cap of omega R and V, right. This is equal to minus Q by M times the Fourier transform of this with respect to the electric field and magnetic field is delta E, it is a in the frequency domain omega R plus V cross delta B omega r multiplied by dot del v dot del v multiplied by f 0. Now, del v acting on f 0 is simple, del v acting on f 0 is simply minus m v by k t into f 0. So, I can substitute that here. Okay. What is important is that in the frequency domain you get a equation of this sort which can be written as formally it can be written as j omega plus L of r v acting on delta f cap at omega r v right. This is equal to some linear functional of uh, the electric field and the magnetic field in the frequency domain. So, I can call this as some linear function, it is a linear function I call it as psi of delta r, delta e omega r and delta b omega r, r and of course, v. Okay. So, if I invert this equation assuming that the resolvent exists at j omega, I get the perturbation to the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution function and v is equal to j omega not Maxwell to the Boltzmann distribution function in the frequency domain j omega plus L of r v inverse acting on this linear function. So, psi of delta E at omega and delta B at omega and of course, the velocity field. I get this solution. Now, but you do not know the perturbations to the electric field and magnetic field. They are also, they are generated within the cavity by the presence of and they are driven and in turn by the currents. So, the question is to determine the modes of oscillation namely delta F cap 
uh, determine the modes of oscillation of the Boltzmann distribution perturbation function. I have to I have to also couple this to the Maxwell equation. That means I have to couple the Boltzmann uh, kinet, Boltzmann kinetic transport equation to the Maxwell equations, and this coupling is actually called the set of Vlasov equations. They're called the Vlasov equations when you use the Boltzmann kinetic transport equation with the relaxation time approximation and couple it to the Maxwell equations for the electromagnetic field within the guide, taking into account that the Maxwell equations for the electromagnetic field within the guide they depend on the current density generated by the plasma. So, what sort of Maxwell equations will you use? You will use del dot E is equal to rho by epsilon, del cross E is equal to minus mu, you are looking at a fixed frequency omega, right. So, this is equal to del cross E is minus j omega mu into h at that frequency, del cross h is j plus j omega epsilon e and del dot h is equal to 0. So, in other words and you are going to use for e the perturbed values of delta e because the constant values of e the constant value the constant parts in the electric field and the magnetic field they were applied from outside. That means, you have a cavity resonator here and you are applying an e 0 and b 0 from outside. They are functions of r only. Right. You can add, for example, you can apply E0 by putting two uh, electric to uh, electric conductors and generating an electric field between them by applying a battery. And magnetic field, a constant magnetic field can be generated by uh, putting a permanent magnet outside the cavity, say a north pole here and a big south pole here. And here you are generating within the cavity delta E as a function of omega or as a function of T and delta H as a function of T. You are generating the electric and magnetic fields within this. So, I am going to use the perturbed form of this. And what do I take for J? For J, I have to take the current density defined by the Boltzmann distribution function. You see, what is F? Delta F T R V is a perturbation in the number of particles per unit volume in phase space. So, if you multiply this by the charge of each particle in the plasma, multiply it B and integrate over D3 V, what is this? You see, this will give you the current density this will give you j as a function of t and r because current equals number of particles per unit volume multiplied by the velocity. Number of particles or if you look at in the sense of an average number of particles per unit volume per unit phase space is f t r v. You are multiplying that number by the velocity and integrating over all the velocities because this is number per unit velocity. The number of particles per unit volume within that have velocities in the range v to v in the range v d 3 v is so much this product you multiply this number of particles per unit volume having velocities in this range with the velocity and integrate over the velocities then you will get the current density. And what about the charge density you do not multiply by velocity simply integrate this over all velocities you get rho T v. Now, take the Fourier transform on both sides this is a linear equation. So, the Fourier the current in the frequency domain is given by j t r is given by q into integral v of delta f cap of omega r v d 3 v. And similarly, rho of omega r the charge density in the frequency domain is given by q times delta f cap of omega r v d 3 v right. And delta f cap satisfies those equations which I wrote earlier. So, in principle you get from the Maxwell equations what do you get? You get del cross E is equal to minus j omega mu h and you have del cross h. Del cross h in place of del cross h I put del cross delta h or del cross delta b. Del cross delta b at omega r 1 by mu is equal to j. j is given by that expression. So, it is given by q times integral v delta f cap at omega r v d 3 v del cross b is equal del cross h is equal to j plus j omega epsilon e omega r and in place of delta f cap I substitute that expression which I got there. So, delta f cap at omega r v is given by uh, j omega plus the partial differential operator L v inverse acting on uh, 
that function psi of delta e and delta h. So, in what I get is a homogeneous integral differential equation for the electric field and magnetic field perturbations. Then what do we do? We expand this electric field and magnetic fields in terms of the sine function, sin n pi x by a, sin m pi y by b, sin p pi z by d, which satisfy the appropriate boundary conditions and transform this into a set of linear algebraic equations for the coefficients. You get a linear algebraic equation and if you take the determinant of that linear algebraic equation and set it equal to 0, you will get all the possible frequencies of oscillation that can exist within the resonator cavity. Okay? I will stop at this point. Thank you.